the neighbor had said she thought she heard screams coming from my house. I saw them up until they got about where those two trees are. First degree felony murder. They didn't do this. I'm Carly Gordon. It's been six long years since nursing student Holly Bobo vanished. Who kidnapped and murdered her? What happened during those final hours of her life? We still don't know, but that could change next week when finally the first trial begins. Tonight, how this all started and why this crime continues to rock this small rural community. The woods of Decatur County, beautiful, serene, it's what the people here want to be known for. But what happened in these woods has made it infamous to all of Tennessee. Holly Bobo, blonde hair, blue eyes, and beautiful. Loved being outside, riding four-wheelers, pretty much a homebody. Loved doing things with her family. Here at Corinth Baptist, in the choir. Holly and I have just pretty much always been extremely close and to the point that I mean when she was a teenager she would just kind of look at me sometimes and say that's scary because we could finish each other's sentences or kind of look at each other and know almost what the other one was thinking. At 20 years old Holly's bedroom looked much like you'd expect. A teddy bear, makeup, pictures of friends and the boys she dreamed of marrying. Holly also had big career plans. She aspired to be a nurse and was working hard to make it happen. The fact is every test that Holly took was a big test because she wanted to do well. Just a short six mile drive from her Swan Johnson Road driveway to the small community college, UT Martin, a trip Holly made several times a week. And yet, on April 13th, 2011, Holly barely made it out the back door. Her daughter was taken from us. It's just sort of out of character for a rural area like this. But right now, we just need the public's help. Investigators found small amounts of blood in the Bobo's garage. They say a man dressed in camouflage took her into the woods, all while her brother Clint, the only witness, watched from a window. He said he thought it was Holly's boyfriend, Drew. The only thing that I could see was his right arm, which was hanging down. I saw them up until they got about where those two trees are, and from that point, I, from that point, I, I, I never saw him again. The Bobos say law enforcement responded quickly that morning. This grid search is about four square miles. I'm gonna get you out there with your forward. We're gonna ride and look. Our yard was full of people and cops, neighbors. Most of them, I guess I knew, a lot of them I didn't know. And in the next hour or two, they was, I don't know how many, they was, say there was hundreds of people here. Still, they say they couldn't seem to get them to do enough in those first few hours that perhaps mattered the most. And, you know, I was begging them to put out roadblocks, and I was begging for an Amber Alert, um, which I found out, you know, they couldn't put one out if you're over 17. Um, and so that morning I actually lied and said she was 17 so I could get that out. I, you know, I wouldn't, I would do that again if I had to. For weeks, life as everyone knew it in Decatur County stopped. Anyone who could searched. Some came from across the country. Neighbors and strangers traped side by side in the woods. They combed the grass for clues on their hands and knees. Most felt it was an amazing display of community determination. It was people out here I didn't know was look, help looking for our daughter day and night. Their bosses left work and come out and help search. Others worried they were unknowingly ruining potential crime scenes, trampling over evidence. I know there was tons of people here trying to help. Um, I, know, I know lots of people were called in. You know, I don't know what else could have been done. In the end, they found nothing. Years passed. The hope Holly would soon return home never faded and her picture was everywhere. Water bottles, semi-trucks, there were ribbons, rides, and rewards. Governor Haslam uh, has increased the reward by $50,000 for the arrest and conviction. The TBI called it the most extensive and expensive case in their agency's history. Historically, this investigation has been one of the most exhaustive of time, resources, 
and finance. Still no arrests. And then finally, this. After three long, fruitless years, a seemingly cold case. And this is just one location. Investigators tell us they searched. Turns red hot. From the time she went missing up until this big break in the case, we were constantly coming here to Decatur County to follow the next lead. Knowing what had become of Holly took over the lives of these people and our viewers. We were all left wondering, what happened to this pretty young girl? Then suddenly, out of the blue really, the announcement of not one arrest, but three. How could that be when they hadn't found a body? Well, you'll find out right after this break. Welcome back. Three years after her disappearance, and there had been no signs of Holly and no arrests. Then suddenly, one morning in late February 2014, an army of agents descended on this rural road, just minutes away from the Bobo's home. 235 Adams Lane quickly became a parking lot full of law enforcement vehicles. Not long after the swarm of officers arrived at the home of Zach Adams, he was under arrest. And when TBI Director Mark Gwynn announced the charges, the impact was immediate. In first degree, felony murder. Murder, a word we hadn't yet heard in the case of missing nursing student Holly Bobo. Remember, at this point, people desperately hoped that somehow, some way, Holly was still alive. After all, her body had not been found. The biggest question we had was, where's Holly? And it's been answered. And it's been answered. We may not know her exact whereabouts, but I know she's in heaven. So who is Zach Adams and where did he come from? Channel 4 was quick to dig in. We are learning more troubling information about the man now charged with the kidnapping and murder of Holly Bobo, including this photograph circulating now on social media, apparently showing Zach Adams in camouflage with the words above it reading, who am I looking for? Could it be significant to this case? Let's go live to Channel 4's Carly Gordon for the very latest. Carly. Jeremy, Zach Adams has been in and out of this jail and dealing with the court system his entire adult life. Drugs, violence, especially against women. Court documents show in 2005 he pulled a gun on his grandparents and threatened to kill them. He was back in our facility, so arrested several times. And listen to these 911 calls from 2005. Zach's grandfather, Dick Adams, calls asking for help. Okay, Zach is, he's wild again. Oh, wild. Wow. Help me. And I, I mean, you put his hands on me. You better get off out here quick. So did he do it? Did Zach kill Holly? And if so, did he act alone? Turns out the TBI was just getting started. We believe there's other individuals out there that have knowledge, possible involvement. Uh, we're working on that right now. Uh, and I would expect, as I said, those individuals know who they are. And I'm sure they're watching. And they can expect us to be on their doorstep. Pretty soon. A few months later, a grand jury indicted this man, Jason Autry, a convicted felon who also had a troubling past. In fact, Autry was already in prison for assault at the time of his indictment. He quickly became known for making scenes in the courtroom. Right hand before God, I'm innocent, sir. But it wouldn't end there. Charges were filed against Zach Adams' kid brother, Dylan. In October, a grand jury indicted him for rape and tampering with evidence. Really, I'm not surprised because uh, law enforcement has been promising uh, that they believe that there were others who were involved in this heinous crime and they were not going to stop until they uh, arrested every single one of them and brought them to justice. And yet a fourth name would be tied to this case. Investigators questioned this man, Shane Austin. But in February of 2015, though he had never been arrested, Austin committed suicide. He may have had information, but how much, we may never know. That left Autry and the Adams brothers all behind bars. But if they murdered her, where were her remains? The answer would come from a walk in the woods. Two men accidentally solved the mystery. After three and a half years of pink bows and candlelight vigils, some hunters searching for the valuable herb ginseng stumbled across Holly's skull. TBI has been able to confirm through the findings of an old ontologist that the remains are of Holly Bobo. The shocking discovery did offer the family a bit of closure. The finding of her body was, uh, was more of a relief 
than, than anything. But now, more than ever, the people of Decatur County wanted those responsible to pay the price. People across Tennessee are now convinced the men responsible for Holly's murder are behind bars awaiting trial. The TBI is adamant they arrested the right men. But there is one woman who sees things very differently, the mother of two of the suspects. She says there's another side of the story you need to hear. Her exclusive interview is coming up right after this break. to the tale of two mothers. Both their lives were upended by the death of Holly Bobo, Holly's own mother, and the mother of two of the main suspects, two women wanting justice for their children. We were always so close, but, you know, it was always the four of us. There's just nothing normal about us anymore. The Bobos have talked to us for years about their anguish. They spoke through tears in 2011 when Holly first vanished. Holly, I love you so much. <laughs> please, please try to get home to us. They welcomed us in their home. Yeah, Holly's room. Karen Bobo let us follow her around as she distributed thousands of flyers. I'm Karen Bobo, Holly's mother. Yeah. The family spoke locally and nationally as often as they could. Desperate for answers, they seized every opportunity to remind people that their sweet Holly remained missing. We know that someone knows something. Now that we're getting closer to a trial, the Bobos are keeping quiet. But the mother of two of the main suspects in the case has decided to end her silence. No mother thinks their kid is a killer. Do you really think that you could look at the evidence and still say, Zach and Dylan didn't do this. I can, Carly. I can say that. I can say that. They didn't do this. Cindy Adams knows what you've heard, how the TBI says they have evidence, how investigators say Dylan actually admitted to the crimes, even how Zach Adams once shot her. And she's never talked about any of it until recently. No, I think I'm ready to do this. So how does it happen? How do the brothers in these photographs end up with these photographs charged in one of the most notorious crimes in Middle Tennessee? Cindy thinks about that a lot. Zach, charged with the kidnapping and murder of Holly Bobo, once had so much promise. He was basically a straight-A student. He uh, actually excelled in sports. And Dylan, charged with kidnapping, rape, and murder, a people pleaser. Dylan's the type of person, you, ha you dangle a cookie in front of him and you want him to do something, you know, he's going to do it. The two brothers were friends, close friends. But Cindy says that changed after she divorced the boy's father. Zach got into drugs, meth mostly, and a life of crime. Do you blame yourself at all? Girl, you know, as a parent, you go back and you just, you know, you, go, you look at, every aspect of their life and you're just like what could have I done different you know how could I change this you know how could I be more present yeah I, I mean it's daily I beat myself up daily over this Cindy moved to Georgia she remembers hearing about Holly's kidnapping on the news in 2011 how a man dressed in camouflage walked Holly into the woods as she was trying to leave for nursing school Cindy says while she and her boys weren't close with the Bobos, they knew of Holly and felt concerned. I even asked my boys, do you guys know anything? Do you know anything? Have you heard anything? No, Mom. No, Mom. The Decatur County Grand Jury handed down indictment. Then came the news. Her oldest son, Zach, was charged with the crime. And first degree felony murder. I mean, you just, I mean, you're just. There's just no words. So you may be thinking, two young men with criminal backgrounds, how could she believe they're innocent? Cindy Adams doesn't mince words. She says her two sons are thieves and drug addicts whose lives revolve around getting their next fix. But she says they're not focused or clever enough to plot a murder. Yeah, look at his rap sheet. I mean, Zachary cannot even go out and steal a deer stand without getting caught. And she says, not secretive enough to get away with it. When more than one person knows about something this horrific that happened, you know, and you're talking about drug addicts, 
how did they keep that quiet? Cindy knows that Dylan made a statement to investigators that they say implicates him and his brother Zach. It's never been made public, but Cindy has heard it. She says Dylan is academically challenged and easily coerced. In this statement, you know, Dylan's trying to tell his story as to what happens. And you've got this TBI agent saying, don't you mean this? Don't you mean it happened like this? And Dylan, you, you, you can honestly tell at the point that Dylan, I can as his mother, he gave up. He's like, okay, if that's what you said, then, you know, okay. Two women, mothers who both want justice and whose lives will never be the same. Not, nothing feels right anymore. Going to my mom's, we don't, you know, we don't have, we don't celebrate birthdays anymore. We don't, we don't celebrate Christmas. We, we don't have family dinners because, you know, there's one of us missing and just nothing feels right. So what did the TBI find? What evidence do prosecutors have in this case? We haven't seen the discovery, but Cindy Adams says she has. Coming up after the break, hear what she says prosecutors do and do not have against her sons, plus her message for the Holly Bobo family. It's a part of her interview you've never heard until now. And welcome back. In just a few days, the case of murdered nursing student Holly Bobo will go to trial. Not in Decatur County, where the crime occurred, but here in Hardin County, 26 miles away. Getting to this point hasn't been easy. The case has been filled with twists and turns. And with everyone wondering, is there enough evidence for a conviction? It's one of the most high profile murder cases in Tennessee's history, and many would agree nothing about it has been normal. I've run out of patience. This case is going to move. The district attorney recused himself after a very public fight with the director of the TBI. There have been courtroom battles over discovery. I have no physical evidence whatsoever. And to this day, many are shocked the judge hasn't moved the case further away from Decatur County, since so many know so much about the case and have already made up their minds. Have you heard anything about this case on the news? Oh, yes. <laughs> Me and all, all of America. Everybody knows about it. Like, everybody in Savannah pretty much knows about it. Six years, all the while the Bobos have suffered, waiting for justice. Things are not happening fast enough. If you go one more day, it's too long. In a few days, we'll all know whether prosecutors have enough to prove their case. So what evidence do prosecutors have in the kidnapping and murder of nursing student Holly Bobo? At this point, attorneys can't talk about it. The TBI won't talk about it, saying it would be, quote, irresponsible to discuss specific aspects of the case outside of court, but that they do stand by their work. The mother of two of the suspects, Cindy Adams, says she's seen the most damaging of the discovery, shown to her and her family by their attorney. And she says investigators have a whole lot of nothing. What this whole case is based on, more or less, is hearsay. We know there are potential case witnesses. Take Benjamin Lee Hendricks, for example. He shared a cell with Zach Adams in the Williamson County Jail. Hendricks told investigators that Zach admitted to the crimes, that he, Dylan Adams, and Jason Autry dumped Holly Bobo's body in the woods. Then there's Jason Autry. He's also charged with Holly Bobo's kidnapping and murder. Sir, I'm falsely accused and innocent. His attorney says Autry now plans to take a plea deal in exchange for his testimony. And Dylan Adams... He made a statement to investigators that they say implicates him and his brother Zach, though Cindy has heard it, and she's adamant that Dylan's statement was coerced. He could not give details of that event. He couldn't tell you what, her, what shirt, color shirt she had on. Cindy Adams says she's waited to speak publicly about any of this out of respect for the Bobo family. But with her son Zach and Dylan Adams about to stand trial, she feels like this is her last chance. I'm going to fight for these boys. Cindy does hope that the Bobos are watching tonight and that they hear her say this. I'm so sorry for your loss. I am just so sorry. I mean, I pray for you every day. I pray for the Bobos every day. I pray that they find justice for Holly. I do. As for the Bobos, one can only imagine what they're going through tonight, what it feels like to lose a daughter. Of course, as Holly's mother, yes, I, you know, I've, um, you know, I've wished, 
a million times that, um, that things would have gone totally different, but that, we can't change that. The Bobos have waited, watched, suffered. They've shown up for every single agonizing court proceeding, determined to see this through together. This has been a nightmare that's still going on. But the Bobos have kept quiet over the past few months as they prepare for the first trial. It's a trial that the world will be watching. At this point, the Bobos tell us they just want to let prosecutors and the jury do their job. Zach Adams' trial is set for July 10th. We will be there as we have been this entire time, bringing you gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage. Be sure to join us here on Channel 4 News and on WSMV.com. I'm Carly Gordon. Thanks for watching.